The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. The readings this weekend exhort us to live wisely in this world, and in my opinion seem to conclude that that means receiving the sacraments frequently. Today's second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, says, Watch carefully how you live. Are we all watching carefully how we live? Now, there are two extremes. There is that extreme of scrupulosity where you're just too much focused on watching yourself and fearful that everything might be a sin. But then there's the other extreme of living carelessly and not watching over yourself and not examining your conscience ever. So... St. Paul says, watch carefully how you live. That is, have a prudent concern. Have a reasonable watchfulness. Not as foolish persons, right? The fool lives carelessly. But as wise, making the most of the opportunity. Because we have one life in this world and our time is limited. Because the days are evil. Since the fall of our first parents, evil has been present in the world. In fact, St. John in his first letter, chapter 5, verse verse 19, says the whole world is in the power of the evil one. There is no nook or cranny, no corner of the world where you can escape temptation. That's just the reality. And that's permitted by God to test us and to try us. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. So what is his will? How are we to live in this world? The first reading kind of takes on the same theme, right? It says, forsake foolishness that you may live, advance in the way of understanding. But we see that the rest of the first reading talks about the church and the seven sacraments. So we want to live wisely. And the reading begins by saying, Wisdom has built her house. Wisdom, that is, wisdom incarnate, the word made flesh, has built her house. Remember the words of our Lord when he said, I will build my church. 
And so that's what this is referring to. Wisdom has built her house, the church. She has set up her seven columns. And what are those? Those are the seven sacraments. The seven sacraments are the, co the columns of the church, those which uphold the structure. And they are there to provide grace in every moment of our life from cradle to grave, from baptism to anointing of the sick. Wisdom calls from the heights out over the city. And if you're calling from the heights out over the city, your voice is going to be heard by everyone. So that is, many are called. That is, everyone is called to enter the church, to be baptized, to repent and be baptized. This is what St. Peter preached in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. He says straight out, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the building up of the church right at the beginning. Whoever is simple, turn in here. Because unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So many are called, but few are chosen. Everyone is called, but few respond because few are disposed. Right? You have to be a little one. You have to be humble. You have to be disposed to entrust your life to God, including your intellect and your will. You need to give these gifts back to God. And so that brings us to the gospel, which talks about the sacrament of sacraments. The first reading spoke about the seven sacraments in general. Now the gospel talks about the sacrament of sacraments, that is, the Holy Eucharist. That word sacrament in Latin, sacramentum, means mystery. So it is the mystery of mysteries, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Notice our Lord is talking about this sacrament in John chapter 6, the Bread of Life Discourse, which we've been reading over these past weeks at Mass. And the Jews are struggling with it. So they say to the, they ask, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? It's the mystery of mysteries. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Notice her Lord doesn't explain. He doesn't go into a theological discourse answering their question on how. He doesn't talk about, well, the substance of the bread is going to be annihilated, and taking its place will be the substance of my body, blood, soul, and divinity. And those accidents of the bread, well, they will be miraculously sustained in existence, adhering to nothing. Because why? They wouldn't have understood that either, as I'm sure many of you didn't understand. Right? So how... Can this man give us his flesh to eat? What does our Lord respond to that question? He simply says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. He reaffirms it. He doesn't change the teaching to accommodate their difficulty, nor does he try to explain it. He's basically saying, have faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't have life within you. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you, supernatural life. This is the reason, by the way, why the church commands that the faithful receive the Eucharist worthily at least once a year. You're obliged. You have to. Receive the Eucharist worthily at least once a year. If not, you do not have life within you. This is one of the precepts of the church. This is like Holy Mother Church force-feeding her children. That's how much she wants them to be saved and to have eternal life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. The reason being is because when we receive the Eucharist, we are receiving the risen and glorified Lord. 
Now, notice none of this resonates on our senses, on our sight, our touch, our taste. We don't necessarily experience it within us. You would think that would be the case. If you're receiving the risen and glorious Lord on your tongue and into your body, wouldn't that have some sensible effect? The answer is no, because this is a supernatural reality. It surpasses our nature. Now, that doesn't mean that it will never have a sensible effect, because God in his goodness can and sometimes does let the experience be felt sensibly, his presence to be perceived sensibly within the soul. That does happen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. So when we receive the risen Lord within us, that is our pledge of eternal life. The risen Lord, the life of Christ, dwelling within the body, that is what is going to raise us on the last day. We're already partakers in a very real sense of our own resurrection. It's just uh, not completed yet. We are in the stage of already, but not yet. And so we go back to living wisely in this world. How is it that we live wisely in this world? By receiving the sacraments frequently, especially those sacraments that we can receive repeatedly, namely, the sacrament of reconciliation, so as to prepare our souls to receive our Lord worthily, to have better dispositions. Because in the sacrament of reconciliation, we are humbling ourselves, and we are receiving God's grace. And when we humble ourselves, that opens, um, enlarges our souls to receive greater grace. That's the key. So frequent reception of the sacrament of reconciliation, I usually recommend once a month at a minimum, and then frequent reception of Holy Communion, even daily, as we pray in the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. But we're not only bodies, but we're also souls. So when we say that prayer in the Our Father, which hopefully we do pray daily, our daily bread refers not, also, not only to that food that sustains our bodies, but I would say especially to the food that sustains our souls. Monthly confession, daily holy communion for those for whom it is, it is possible, and you will be living very well in this world, very wisely. You will be heading towards eternal life. Let's take the word of God to heart, the truth that it teaches us, and put it into practice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.